Hello and uh, welcome to this lecture. So we have seen so many functions uh, as part of these uh, series of lectures and now we are going to see this important hyperbolic functions. Okay, so hyperbolic functions, where do they come from? Uh, so it turns out uh, any function f can be written as a sum of an even symmetric function and an odd symmetric function. This is very important to know because many functions may not have odd symmetry or even symmetry. Only some functions have. What about a function which does not have any symmetry? Okay, so it turns out you can still write it as a sum of an odd symmetric part and an even symmetric part. The, actually, it is very, very simple how to do it, right? No, how do you do it? You can write f of x as f of x plus f of minus x by 2 plus f of x minus f of minus x by 2. So, if you see here, this f of minus x and minus f of minus x will cancel and you will get f of x plus f of x is 2, f of x by 2, it becomes f of x. The same thing, I am just rewriting it with some introducing some trick. But interestingly, what happens when you do this is, this guy, this guy, right, this part, this part becomes even, okay. f even of x, f of x plus f of minus x by 2 is even and this is called the even part of x. Likewise, this part becomes odd, okay, it is an odd symmetric function. You can see it very easily, right. In this function, if I put x equals minus x, I get the same guy again. In this function, if I put x equals minus, guy, uh, minus x, I will get minus of this function. So, very quickly we see that this uh, f, any f of x can be written as a sum of odd and even part. Okay. So, symmetry is very good, you know, I mean having symmetric functions uh, is very nice because quite often in physical reality a lot of symmetry is satisfied, one way or the other it will be the same. So, you want functions which have symmetry and if you have a function f of x which satisfies some other special property, you know, like for instance e power x, e power x satisfies this wonderful special property is the derivative is itself and we see how powerful it is and we will see soon enough how powerful it is and it finds application everywhere, right. But it is not symmetric e power x is not symmetric and in reality you may want something that is symmetric, okay. So, for those kind of things we can use this, okay. So, here is an example of exponential functions, very useful but it does not have symmetry. How do you come up with the odd and even part of the exponential function and that is how the hyperbolic functions are formed, okay. So, the hyperbolic cosine, so this notation are sine and cos, why are they trigonometric? I will show you why the sine and cos kind of picture is there. Uh, you will see that this, it turns out these functions have very nice connections with the trigonometric functions, right. See, remember, what is cos x without the hyperbolic? Instead of x, you should put i x, isn't it? The complex, so e power i x plus e power minus i x by 2, it ends up being cos x. But if you drop the i and if you just think of the even part of exponential alone, you get the hyperbolic cosine. Cos hyperbolic is e power x plus e power minus x by 2. It is a very, very different function from cos x, okay. Cos x has, you know, it is on the circle, it goes round and round, it, so it is periodic, it has a wonderful, a lot of wonderful properties. But this cos hyperbolic is different, but it also has many, many useful properties. I will show you a picture and I will walk you through why uh, this, uh, you know, trigonometry type uh, motivated definition is there and you can also see it from the exponential form, right. The cos without the hyperbo hyperbolic h is e power i x plus e power minus i x by 2 with the hyperbolic is just e power x plus e power minus x by 2. Very similarly for sin e power x minus e power minus x by 2. So, hyperbolic cosine is the even part of the exponential function, hyperbolic sine is the odd part of the exponential function. So, it will inherit a lot of good properties of the exponential function, but it will be symmetric, okay. That, that is very, very nice to have. So, it turns out there is also this very simple relationship. Uh, cos hyperbolic square x minus sin hyperbolic square x is 1, okay. You can check this, you just substitute this formula here, square subtract, you will get 1, okay. So, it is very easy to check this. So, this is also reminiscent of the sin and cos formula, right. Cos square x plus sin square x is equal to 1. There is a plus there, there is a minus here. So, another geometric uh, interpretation, why, why people, uh, you know, think of this hyperbolic uh, function. Now, you have a circle, where does the word hyperbolic come from, right. x square plus y square equals 1 is the circle. Isn't it? That's the red circle, and the cosine and sine functions are uh, you know description of an arbitrary point at an angle theta away. The point is cos theta comma sine theta, right? For theta between zero and two pi. So that's how we describe the circle, isn't it? Cos theta sine theta. This is called the parametric description for the circle. Instead of defining it as x square y square equals one, you do the polar uh, coordinates x equals uh, cos theta y equals sine theta. So at any theta you have cos theta comma sine theta. So that's the polar interpretation. Just like the circle, there is a curve which is called the hyperbola. What is the hyperbola? Instead of x squared plus y squared equals 1, you have x squared minus y squared equals 1. The hyperbola has two sides, like this side and there is also a, you know, you should also draw it on this side. I am not showing that that side hyperbola, only this side I am showing. This is 
a part of a hyperbola. Okay, x squared minus y squared equals 1. This cos hyperbolic t comma sin hyperbolic t for any t greater than or equal to 0 is actually a point on this hyperbola. Just like this cos theta sin theta is point on this circle, cos hyperbolic t comma sin hyperbolic t is actually a point on this hyperbola. So that's why these things are called hyperbolic sin, hyperbolic cosine. So this is sort of the connection for the term hyperbola. Okay, so, so you see, I mean, lots of nice uh, relationships are true here. And, uh, you know, we will be interested in properties of this cos hyperbolic and sin hyperbolic. Okay, so you can do derivatives. This is very, very easy. Cos hyperbolic derivative is sin hyperbolic x. Sin hyperbolic derivative is cos hyperbolic x. There is no minus here. And you can see the derivatives come out very, very easily. It's just the standard, standard uh, derivative formula. Okay, the exponential function f of x satisfies f prime of x equals f of x, right? So, the sinusoidal functions satisfy f of x equals, I mean, if, if you have two sinusoidal functions, f of x equals cos x, g of x equals sin x, so an interesting relationship they satisfy. f prime of x is minus g of x and g prime of x is f of x. Okay, this is a very nice relationship. So, in fact, if you differentiate it twice, what happens? f double prime of x will become minus f of x, right? f double prime becomes minus f of x. Now, exponential function f double prime is what? f of x itself. Right, f prime of x is f of x, f double prime of x is f of x. But interestingly, with sine and cos, f double prime of x becomes minus f of x. Okay, and f prime itself has this min this relationship that they go between each other. Okay, the derivatives go like. Now, hyperbolic functions, cosine and sine, satisfy a very interesting combination here, slightly different. f of x is cos hyperbolic, g of x is sine hyperbolic, f prime is g, g prime is f, and what about f double prime? f double prime will be f g double prime will be g, okay. So, notice very nice connections between, you know, uh, first derivative, second derivative being equal to the function itself, right, or negative of that function. All of that is satisfied by exponential cosine, I mean, uh, sine cos and uh, sine hyperbolic cos hyperbolic, okay. So, that is uh, important to understand, okay. So, power series also, there is a very similar power series here. Exponential function is e power x is 1 plus x plus x square so on. Sinusoidal functions have power series like this, right? Cos x is 1 minus x square by 2 plus x power 4 by 2 minus plus so on. Sin x is x minus x cube by 2. For the hyperbolic, cos hyperbolic is 1 plus x square by 2 factorial x power 4 by 2 factorial 4 factorial so on. Sin hyperbolic is x plus x cube by x power 5, etc. Okay. So, very nice connections, you know, just, just putting all these things together, why we define these things. We will see later on that these functions uh, form important uh, solutions to some systems and all that. So, they play a very, very vital role, okay. So, uh, just a, uh, now, now we have seen cosine and sine, we can also do tan, okay. What is tan? Hyperbolic tangent is sine hyperbolic by cos hyperbolic. If you write it in terms of e power, it will be e power x minus e power minus x by e power x plus e power minus x. Tan hyperbolic has wonderful four properties as well. Uh, here is a plot of all three of them. Uh, cos hyperbolic will be even, it will, minimum value is 1, it will be always above 1, it will have a shape like that. Sine hyperbolic will be odd symmetric, uh, it will go <coughs> to in minus infinity and minus infinity like this, okay. And then tan hyperbolic will actually be between minus 1 and 1, it will not go anywhere else and it will have this nice uh, sort of smooth shape uh, from minus 1 to 1, okay. Some nice uh, properties, cos hyperbolic goes from real numbers to, you know, e power x plus e power minus x by 2, this numerator will always be, you know, uh, greater than 2, so you will get this 2 here. And then... Uh, r goes to, I mean, the cos hyperbolic uh, takes any real, all the real numbers to 1 to infinity. Sin hyperbolic takes real numbers to real numbers. Tan hyperbolic takes all the real numbers to the set minus 1 comma 1, okay. Interesting functions, you can plot these. I did these on Desmos and you can see them and how they behave, okay. Tan hyperbolic is an important addition as well, okay. Now, we can push to other functions like, you know, we went from, you know, secant, cosecant, co uh, cotangent. Like that, you can do uh, secant h which will be the, you know, the reciprocal of cos hyperbolic, right, and it will take real numbers to 0, 1, because, you know, cos goes to 1 to infinity, so it will go to 0, 1. Hyperbolic uh, cosecant is uh, the one re reciprocal of sine hyperbolic, uh, you know, 0 cannot be there, no, r minus 0 to r minus 0. Hyperbolic cotangent is the reciprocal of a tang, uh, it will go to, you know, minus infinity, minus 1, 1 to infinity, okay. I am not plotting these things, you can plot these on uh, Desmos and see it. 
cos, uh, cos hyperbolic, secant hyperbolic or even, all these other guys are odd functions and there are some nice identities they satisfy. I mean just, just because of these expressions, you can plug these expressions in in terms of the exponential function, it will all be proven. Cos hyperbolic square minus sin hyperbolic square is 1, secant hyperbolic square is 1 minus tan hyperbolic square, cosecant hyperbolic square is cot hyperbolic square minus 1. Okay, so these are all simple uh, direct identities and relationships and one can use them in various ways in understanding the function. Okay. Okay. Uh, so that concludes the, this lecture on the hyperbolic functions. Once again, there's lots of definitions here, but I hope you saw those properties of those derivatives. Those are really powerful and they find a lot of applications in many engineering and science problems. Thank you very much.